Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about why Zig is migrating from AWS, Amazon Web Services, to a self-hosted solution. So Zig recently announced that they are migrating from AWS to self-hosted. And in this post, we'll explore what they're doing, why they're doing it, and what we can learn from their migration. All right, first off, what is Zig migrating? So Zig is migrating zigling.org. This is their official language site, similar to fsharp.org for fsharp or python.org for python. The official Zig site basically has a few primary functions that provides you know, some official documentation. It hosts different language version downloads and then news like this announcement post. If you've never seen it before, it's something like this. You know, most programming languages has this as kind of like the default place to go to learn about the language and stuff like that. And an interesting part of this is that they are hosting all of their downloads, all their version downloads on their site, um, which we'll get into in a minute. All right, so how is Zig hosted on AWS? And I think this is useful to understand like why they're moving off of it. So previously Zig hosted their externally facing static website and version downloads using Amazon S3 and CloudFront. S3 is a static asset host and CloudFront is Amazon CDN. And we can see here that if we look at their monthly downloads, this is their monthly um, AWS hosting costs, that over the years, their costs have risen from about $10 a month way back in 2019 up to about $600 a month um, here in 2024. And in 2023, according to their um, financial reports, Zig paid out about $14,000 in infrastructure costs coming out to about $1,000 per month, which is around 3% of their total expenses. All right, so why is Zig migrating off of AWS? So Zig is a relatively small language used by just 0.9% of developers, as we can see here in the Stack Overflow 2024 dev survey. And yet they're spending around $1,000 per month to host their static assets. And they seem to be projecting growth forward and coming to the conclusion that their current and for costs are untenable. You know, now they're a pretty small language. If we look at, you know, the, the survey, Zig, um, is down here 0.9%, which is, you know, just as small as, as my favorite F sharp here. And so they're already paying $1,000 per month. And they're basically referencing several popular languages and their ballooning usage and maintenance costs over the years. And being like, if we follow the same curve, then this is going to turn into like a lot more money. And so some of the languages that they're referencing here are REST. So REST um, is much larger at 11.7%. So REST is way up here. And they paid $404,000 in for costs in 2023. What are they paying all this money for? I don't know. I have to assume it's like, you know, serving static assets, you know, like their libraries and for cargo and stuff like that. Um, but that's like pretty high for just a language. And they also reference Python, which is, you know, one of the largest, let's look over here, you know, top five largest language usage. And their package storage has nearly doubled um, for the past few years. They have like, uh, I think 70 terabytes or something that they're storing here. Yeah, 76 terabytes. And it's basically doubled every year for the past few years. And basically they looked at that in reference to their own growth. And basically they saw that their own infra costs are increasing by about one and a half to two X every single year. And they wanna change that trajectory because they don't really get that much money. Um, they get about $460,000 a year. So this is like most of it if they ever get to rest size because they don't wanna spend that on infra. Instead, they wanna spend it on more developers and contributors who are actually contributing to make the language and ecosystem better. Okay, so what is Zig migrating to? Basically, there's only two main parts of their operation that they say that they're paying a lot of infra cost to. And the first is their static site, which they're basically just moving to a $36 or euro per month server via Hetzner, which I'm guesstimating is around a four vCPU, 16 gigabyte RAM. If they're doing cloud, if they're doing dedicated, this is probably closer to a six core um, 32 gigabyte RAM, but somewhere in that range, just a single server. And then for downloads, which is probably where a lot of their bandwidth and hosting costs come from, they're just gonna serve it from the server and then prefer secondary monitors or mirrors via torrents, which will you know, ideally take some of that traffic and bandwidth off of their, their server so they're not paying for it. Instead, the other seeders are paying for it. And so that's the basic setup. They said that they're starting with this 36 euro per month server, and if they get bigger, they're willing to go up to 200 euros per month, but say that they hope to not need that, and really they think that's the cap of what they should be paying. So they're really going you know, the, the minimal route here. And this actually should help them quite a lot because it's capping their hosting costs per month, which avoids the runaway cloud costs, which is often what happens when you, you know, get larger scale um, at some of these larger public clouds, while likely giving them more than enough power to serve their static site. A lot of these more like single server dedicated hosts 
um, actually give you quite a lot of bandwidth and power compared to these public costs per dollar. So this should get them um, pretty far. They're also mentioning that a large portion of their costs are coming from sudden spikes in bandwidth. Um, they don't say exactly why, but they do mention that oftentimes malfunctioning CI processes seem to give them a bunch of traffic surges. Like I guess you could imagine a CI breaks and so the developer keeps clicking like restart and it just keeps downloading the packages and breaking later on. And so that seems to be a relatively frequent source of high traffic for them. And so even if their site goes down because it's DDoSed by one of these things, it's okay because their costs are pretty, pretty capped. And so this seems to be the you know mental model for why they're choosing um, this kind of hosting. And I do want to call out that Hetzner itself does charge for egress bandwidth. So this won't totally be free, you know, moving from S3 to um, hosting this on just a machine, but their egress fees will likely be much lower than AWS. So current prices put Hetzner at about $1 per terabyte and AWS is at $92 per terabyte. So we could probably expect a savings of about 92x, assuming that the egress is, you know, a large part of their infrastructure costs. Now further, Zig is talking about starting distributing their future version releases via torrent. And this is an interesting approach. I've never seen this from a programming language before, but this would basically allow people to volunteer to set up mirrors and seed these torrents to further remove bandwidth usage from Zig because the mirrors and the seeders would actually be serving those requests um, themselves. Next. So I've been closely following the trend from public clouds to self-hosted options. The prices are often vastly cheaper, like 10x cheaper for compute, while often providing more performance, like 2 to 4x, which can be pretty appealing. Now, the downside, of course, is more administration on your part, but new tools like Coolify and Docploy make this a lot easier, giving you more of a um, platform as a service kind of feel than legacy server administration used to feel like, where you're setting up the whole server and you got to manually, like, you know, set up your web hooks and, and everything like that. Now, I've personally been playing around with self-hosted myself and have migrated several of my sites over to a Hetzner server using Coolify as my um, pass provider. And early results are pretty good. I achieved about 10x less server cost, 100x less bandwidth costs, and 4x latency improvements, which is, you know, all the positive so far. I'll be posting more about my experiences soon, so, you know, stay tuned for that. Now, if you like this post, you might also like how this developer's side project wrapped up a $100,000 cloud bill on Netlify and five ways to avoid the same fate. You might also be interested in how I host my server-side rendered F-sharp site on Google Cloud for less than $1 per month, which is how this site is currently hosted. And you might also be interested in the Hamstack, a simple scalable tech stack for building modern web apps, fast and cheap, which is kind of my philosophy for trying to build modern cloud native apps in a very like reasonable way. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.